I'm good. Good. I'm excited. I know these IG lives can get a little complicated, so thank you for for trying this with us and you know letting us have an opportunity to just meet you and learn more about your studio and what you've been up to. And and first off, mm. thanking you for supporting our publication. I'm sure you know you get a random email like, "Hey, a magazine," and you're probably like, "What?" But you were so kind and 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 so generous. And so thank you so well, much absolutely. for supporting our um, publication. I, I love. <laughs> the name. I love the ethos. I, I loved your invitation and it just felt really good and instinctually right. So I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you. So I was reading on your page and on your website, you have had your studio yeah. for 18 years. And I'm just, I'm so amazed and, and inspired and I, I want to know what what has it been like owning a studio? Oh. For, I mean, you've seen so much change in the industry. Yeah. I, uh, what's it been I, like? I, I, I mean, that's a loaded question. Write uh, multiple <laughs> books on what it's been like, um, <laughs> and, and and people have suggested that before. Yeah. Write the movie, write the book, you know, um, of the I don't know the world of yoga and how, in particular, in Los Angeles, but I would say also, in, you know, in in the world, how much it's changed just in these 18 years, if we think about how much life has changed in these 18 years, and, and yoga is not going to be immune to that at all. Um, but my husband and I opened it in 2004, and really what was happening was we were actors, and we had made our living as actors, and we had a theater called Salvation Theater in Silver Lake. And I fell really deeply in love with yoga as a practice that was um, changing my experience as a human being, but also in my art and so forth. Mm. And it started to just pull me and pull me and draw me so much um, that somehow by, I don't know, hook or crook and divine happenstance, we ended up running um, and managing a studio. And at the time that we were managing that studio, there were a lot of changes happening in the yoga world. I, I became a teacher, of course, and um, dove really deep into that, started to step out of my acting life and world. And um, mm -hmm. then this, this studio that we were running was becoming one of many that were being sort of gobbled up by a corporate enterprise um, that was very, I'll give it a generous word, passionate about taking small independent studios and turning them into something right. you know more formulaic not bad but just different so we yeah. ended up being in the middle yeah. of this really interesting time in 2004 that was okay. you know the mom and pop studio versus what they were calling mick yoga and we were in the la times and the la weekly being interviewed about it, it was really um, a very intense and very fascinating time so our answer to that, because it was coming right into our backyard and we were going to lose our studio or try to actually claim it, um, was to open liberation yoga and yeah. just do it the way that we wanted to do it at that time. Mm -hmm. And it was very, um, very mm -hmm. warm and very, um, I want to say, connected to the spirit and the roots. There was nothing driving us but the yoga and the community and, you know, the authenticity and genuineness of that world. Um, we didn't have to answer to anything else. We had to work really, really hard, but it was a beautiful, beautiful, I mean, still to this day, but it was a beautiful time. You know, it was a very, yeah. um, yoga hadn't been sort of maybe oversaturated yet and, and scrambling to find um, mm -hmm. your voice wasn't hard. You just kind of showed up and, brought something good and pure and real and people appreciated that yeah and um yeah. you know i think there are good things that have happened over the years for example more yoga to more people will always be good um, whoever finds it however they find it whatever speaks to them if it brings more light yeah. peace and love it can't be wrong you know um some of the things that i think are <laughs> get a little bit compromised are um you know, anything when it becomes so big, it starts to have its own internal issues and sort of, you know, what's behind it and what really is yoga and what's calling itself yoga now. And um, yeah. so, you know, but those are questions yeah. that come up for anything. Um, in, in anything that achieves a certain level of notoriety, you know, um, is going to face those questions. So we've yeah. seen it all. And, um, you know, t I'll tell you one thing that hasn't changed. We used to fold blankets and scrub mm -hmm. floors, and we still 
well, my husband passed away last year um, unexpectedly of a heart condition, so it's just me now. Yeah. Um, single mom, single studio owner, but I'm still folding blankets. I'm still sweeping floors. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm you know, still Aww. making the tea. Um, have incredible teachers right. and a phenomenally supportive community that I love with all my heart and soul that has supported my daughter and I in liberation. Um, but, you know, it's definitely... Definitely, at the end of the day, you're picking the dust bunnies up in the corner and sending out the links. <laughs> right, right. And is there something somewhat comforting that there's something that still has hold, held all these years? Like you start and kind of end your day the same, even though everything in the middle has maybe changed a little yeah. bit. You have that continuity of like opening yeah. the doors, cleaning the floors, closing the doors. Like, there's I something comforting. Say that and recognize well. that because I'll tell you, besides teaching and being with people and sharing their lives and you know being part of their exploration my favorite thing is to putter around and when covid um yeah. took you know took that away largely for all of us in terms of being in space together yeah. that way um you know a huge piece of my heart was was just kind of collapsed. And mm -hmm. it was very difficult for me to even come to the yeah. studio. And Gary, my husband, bless his heart, came to water mm -hmm. all of our plants and to upkeep. And for me, it was sort of like mm -hmm. I imploded with it yeah. a little bit. And being back here and puttering mm -hmm. around yeah. and making all the little special, you know, places and pieces of it, um, and then having people come in and feel that energy is just, it's just, it's mm -hmm. a blessing, it's divine, you know? So yes, that is comforting, yeah. the continuity, like yoga itself, no matter what you call it or what you do with it, right. you're doing some positions on the mat, you're, mm. you know, breathing, you're meditating, and it's the same thing it was 6,000 yeah. plus years ago. <laughs> yeah. 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 How has your personal practice changed over the years? I mean, you know, definitely as we get older and as our life gets busier and less busier in COVID, have you personally had a change in the way you practice or how often you practice? Yeah. What, yeah what's it um, like? I practice 24 seven in my heart and mind and in my body much less. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so yeah, it's a constant upkeep, yeah. you know, here. Um, but physically, yeah. I've gone through a lot of different changes in my practice over the years. One of the beautiful things about it is, you know, I used to really love a nice, solid, rigorous vinyasa flow. I came from the background of Jiva Mukti mm -hmm. in New York and then, you know, some Ashtanga based flow and mm -hmm. also gentle yoga and vinny. I teach mm -hmm. all of it, you know, meditation, the whole thing. But um, I used to need a lot to get to my yogic experience of feeling unified and whole and you know grounded and peaceful mm. and physically it takes very little for me to get there now to keep my body healthy you know mm. and in shape um and i mean really internally in shape is more my interest at this point um right i do keep up a practice you know of a few times maybe three times a week on my own but i teach around 20 classes a week yeah and i still demonstrate a lot um, which I don't necessarily suggest yeah, for my yeah. teacher trainees, you know, to be demonstrating as much. But during the yeah. online Zoom time, I found that I had to demonstrate a lot. Um, mm -hmm. You know, people are having a harder yeah. time without that three-dimensional real, um, you know, real-life experience. So because of that, I mean, it's kind of a yeah. plus, you know, that my, my passion and my vocation and my dharma, my life's path keeps me, you know, active. But in terms of formal practice, I really think listening to my body and knowing my limits has been the biggest change and not getting mixed up about what it means to be um, having a practice and seeing it more holistically and how it feeds into my parenting and into my personal relationships and into how I eat and drink and can just yeah. process, you know, moment by moment the day. Yeah. So yeah. it's definitely, I practice yeah. physically less on my mat than I used to, but I'm more connected to it than ever. Wow. And that's, that's all we could hope for, right? I mean, at this point, it's like, and I feel the same way when I was much, much younger. Yeah. It was the same. Yeah. I needed that sweat. I needed the, that to feel that burn. And, and I don't know if it was just COVID or just getting older or, or both. Yeah. But all of a sudden, everything got so quiet. And I loved yeah. it. And yeah. I really craved that yes. quiet and that grounding. Comfort. 
And it was so, and I was like, am I just old? No, you're I just wise. Like, I didn't know, I think and I didn't just care. Just wise, <laughs> right? My, my, my daughter, um, you know, she's um, 13, and she meditates twice a day, and that came up through the healing of her heart from her dad. And yeah. we had um, a, a serious yeah. illness that was gut, gut illness that was related to about with COVID. Mm -hmm. But the beautiful thing is it taught her the value at a very young age of slowing down. So I think it's wisdom at whatever age we come to it. And then when you have a really rigorous practice or you're in the mood for it, it feels tremendous to celebrate whatever that is for you, right? It might not be what it is for somebody else, but it feels so good to celebrate that and not have it as, I don't know, maybe an agenda or this kind of expectation goal where you never feel like you're keeping you know, up enough. I mean that pressure. We don't. We don't need that. We don't yeah. need that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Have you noticed it in terms of what your community wants in terms of classes that the studio is offering? Has that changed well, as so well many over the years? Times, has it you know? stayed the same? Um, I mean, yes. Yeah. Overall, yes. Yeah. And then throughout the years, different yeah. things. And I really love to kind of connect that sociologically. Like, what's What's happening politically? What's mm. happening health-wise in the world? What's happening economically? Yeah. And what are people needing based on those changes? Mm. And that's just kind of me noticing, you know. Um, but right now, I really feel that liberation, um, it's been, yeah, 18 years. And we had to move a few years ago. We were priced out of our gorgeous, beautiful, root-based, you know, studio that had won a lot of awards for its beauty and hominess and everything. Um, but our new studio, which is now yeah. three years old, is really, really incredible and has an indoor garden instead of an outdoor garden. But because we opened it and then basically eight or nine months later, COVID happened, this, yeah, it was like then we oh. shut again. So um, it's just been fits and starts, fits and starts, you know, still folding blankets, but yeah. And, um, and right. now I think liberation is kind of much like we all are coming to know itself again mm. and see what it needs mm. to serve the community. And I'm seeing a real right. diversity always, which is perfect in how I want it to be, um, you know, from whether it's age yeah. or cultural background or practice background, you know, novices to more seasoned yogis. Um, we are very, very all over the place in a wonderful way with that. But I have noticed, generally speaking, that there's not as big a call for, you know, what hot yoga is really um, offering. Um, I'm not getting a lot of people yeah. who really want that, like, drive, drive, drive. They want a more reflective yeah. flow, a yeah. more, you know, definite strength building and flexibility, but kind of a, a deeper, thoughtful version of that. And then restorative, mm -hmm. which we have. Yeah. I teach a monthly chakra restorative class too, which is really lovely. Um, but they want something, I mm -hmm. think, that gives what you were saying, some peace, some comfort, yeah. not moving maybe so fast all the time, but still feeling like you moved, you yeah. know? Um, yeah, so that seems to be um, gen sort of, um, yeah, I guess that's it. That's what I'd say. And, it, and it's interesting what you say, because there is sort of a sociological reflection always. I think you're right. It is kind of mirroring always what we're yeah. going through internally as a society. You know, yeah. We all went through this intense trauma of living through COVID and we're all sort of going, and now with the political and the, like everything's shifting again. And, and it always is kind yeah. of reflecting what people, yeah. it, you're right. It's, it's fascinating how it, it is. And the barometer. I almost. love that about it because yoga as a reflection of society, yeah. yoga seeks to serve and yoga is for everybody. So if we're seeking to serve everybody and flexibility is part of the practice and the offerings, to be able to kind of move with that, I think is a really beautiful synthesis and kind of symbiosis. Um, yeah, I enjoy that. Yeah. It, it was interesting for me when everything shut down because I'm based in New York City and I actually lived in LA for many years uh, and I absolutely oh. love it. I went to graduate school at USC and then I moved back to New York and it, you know during COVID there was everything was so quiet and was so still and it's just 
it, we're sort of getting back into it now, but a lot of the studios I was talking to at the time, it's like they had to adjust yeah. their schedules with work from home. Like there were no more noon classes because people, so it was so interesting to me to be able to observe it through this yes. separate lens that we were doing it. So it was like that yeah. everywhere, no matter where you were in the country, LA, New York. You know, I think it's, it's, it's interesting a little time for people it, to come out yeah. and through and put the pieces together and figure out what do I want to take from that time mm -hmm. that was so beneficial and nourishing and what mm -hmm. am I excited to get back to and how do those things blend together mm -hmm. and yoga being union you know I think yeah. it's like it was how do I find unity yeah yeah I did find that in a lot of people, like especially my friends, like who sort of dove back to how, yeah. as we say, was the normal before and who sort of took back and tried to take a little bit of everything and who was like, none yes. of that worked for me. You know, <laughs> I, was, I need something totally different. So everyone had such an interesting um, reaction to everything. And I think it's still, we're yeah. still sort of, uh, I think, recuperating a little bit. Do you feel like your community is still going yeah, through you know, and, you I mean, just yeah. specifically to, to liberation, we had this kind of extra complication in understanding where that's at because of having survived the move, which was a huge deal and had to kind of suddenly happen quickly. And because liberation is the kind of space that isn't sort of prefab, it like grows like the practice does. And our mm -hmm. place looked like it had been there for you know, 50 years more than just 15. So to come in and create a new space that had some of that history, luckily energetically you could feel it, and, and get it going and get our yeah. students to be able to find us and be comfortable coming to a new space and then welcome the new neighborhood and whoever else might be there. Yeah. And as that was just literally yeah. finding its groove, then the shutdown and yeah. then reopening, everything got so scattered again. You know, and lots of our, we, most of our teachers yeah. have taught with us for all of 18 years. They are all seasoned. I mean, they're, they're just not coming yeah. to this as of yesterday from, you know, a wonderful workshop. They are the real deals and they're very, very special in that way, mm -hmm. as I believe all teachers to be, but I have to be biased that these are some of the best teachers I can imagine. Um, and, uh, yeah. and I say that, you know, you know, with great love for all of the teachers out there that have taught for us over the years that I see, you know, mm -hmm. so missed because we got scattered and people, mm -hmm. you know, they open their own things and they right. do their own things and I'm so, gra you know, happy for them. Mm -hmm. But the students scatter, the teachers scatter, the staff scatters, and then you're kind of trying yeah. to pull the pieces yeah. back in. And that process mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. ongoing. And I think, you know, Students are also trying to find their rhythm and they're trying to find out how to work partly from home and partly in person and still get yoga in and they're sick of Zoom, yeah. but then Zoom's so convenient, but then they want to be at the studio, but then, you know, it's, just, it's like, it's like this crazy puzzle of way too many pieces. Um, but the earnestness, you know, and the yeah. intention is there. And I'm just with my daughter and our teachers and our beautiful community mm -hmm. and my dear friend Jenny Eeks who helps me infinitely and we would not even be doing this mm -hmm. live right now if not for her because I'm yeah. quite lost I must say um anyway <laughs> with, um, yeah thank you Jenny thank you Jenny um, and with the you know with with all of those kind of pieces coming together my main goal is to keep creating this beautiful energetic space also keep maintaining our zoom yeah online because I want to make sure that anybody who has moved away because so many people moved away you know can still find us and yeah. to keep brick and mortar you know alive and integrate it with this new world I personally think space and being in proximity is essential to mm -hmm. our mental and physical health and I, I really take that yeah. seriously as part of my calling um, to be here and I, I will, um, I say this with like love and peace, fight to the end to maintain that um, and still yeah. offer and yeah. pull in, you know, I'm grateful to technology, but it's not the only thing. So, right. yeah, so right. I do think it's going to be a process and, you know, I hope to just continue to be able to push that broom, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and at least, I mean, I could ask you a million questions. I would love to chat all day with you, but there is one thing that I, I want to ask every uh, person that I speak to in those moments, you know, when you were fighting the fight and things were feeling dark and maybe more challenging than normal, what was your go-to? Well, the first thing that you always did that you were like, this is the thing or the person 
name or the thought or the spot that it was just the first thing you went to to get you back on that path to your peace and your comfort. Okay. Um, what was that? That thing, thing is persevered. bringing tears to my eyes. So I, I'll be transparent. That thing is my husband, Gary. And, um, and I'll tell yeah. you the reason because he mm -hmm. had and still has because I speak to him daily spiritually and he is doing the same thing from beyond mm -hmm. that he was doing here for me. He had yeah. and has a way of cutting to the essence of the truth of the heart of mm -hmm. things and being able to be very solid and simple in what needs to happen and what's the right thing. And mm -hmm. I would ask him yearly, probably, and especially during certain years, although we had some that were, you know, smooth sailing, but. Yeah. Tell me, tell me, you broke out. No, come back. Yeah. You're like, this yeah. is the secret. So, you oh cut out. Like, so, no. um, you know, he always just knew right action, you know, very sort of spiritually and, and practically. And I tend to float a little higher and I'm very optimistic, but I'm more worried. And he would be seeming to be more of the darker energy, but not worried. And he always said, we have to go on. We have to do it. It's the right thing. We have to be here for them. And I being the teacher, you know, would be out in the front and he would be, you know, in yogic terms, Purush and Prakriti. He's like the steady, secure energy. And I was the one making, you know, this energy. So still I, yeah. I reach out and I say, and I, and I say to all, you know, guides and spirit and universe, and I ask for signs. And I get many, many signs. Oh, I mean, literal signs actually have popped up in my face. You know, go on. <laughs> so, um, yeah. you know, or I mean, there's so many, I can't even think of them now. But honestly, the connection yeah. to source and love and spirit um, has been essential. Mm -hmm. And the connection to that through my husband living and, and now um, you know, in the other realm has, has been it. Yeah. And, and the last little piece I do want to add to that is oftentimes mm -hmm. when I would be up all night worrying about making the rent or, you know, getting the checks out to the teachers or who, you know, who needs what from us and how can I serve it? I would wake up and there would be an email or a text or maybe now that I DM a DM saying, you know, liberation has saved my life, or I don't know what I would do without you. Thank you guys for what you do. And the yeah. timing of that, and I'd say, there it is. Okay, time to go. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. I, I, love, I love when that happens. And it's like, you, you don't even have to be that tuned in, quite honestly, because sometimes it really you just happens in your face. To remember to notice like, oh, okay. it and not be too busy in something else to see it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. But those moments, I agree, they're just, and, and to anyone that's ever listening or anyone that's ever with you, you know, when they share oh, those things, thank you to them, absolutely. you know, thank you to them for this. I'm sure you might not even think it's a big deal, you, right? like, oh. you know, the first three years of liberation, oh my goodness, you know, that, that was its own kind of energy. And yes, it's people listening, you know, we all hear you just like you hear the people who spur you on. And those things, you, I mean, honestly, I am sure that I am not the only one and you're not the only one at times when I thought, are we supposed to pull the plug and then that comes in? It's like an intervention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. And can I say something to somebody oh, yeah. that I see is here? And then, um, so Domi Ericato, yes, Erica absolutely. Flores, my dear, dear Erica Flores, she has been absolutely um, instrumental in liberation all of these years as an artist, um, as a social mm -hmm. media person, as a, as a mm -hmm. friend, and she's just, an incredible piece of liberation. And I see her there and I just wanted to send her that. Mm -hmm. Hi, Matthew Arnold. I <laughs> Thank you, Erica. <laughs> thank you to all the, yeah. the cheerleaders and the spirits and the guides and everyone. Thank you. And thank you, Christine. I mean, oh. this has been a beautiful chat. And, and part of the reason I ask is exactly what you said. You know, I, I also have moments where I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing? And then it's, it, when I hear people's stories and all the things that they, they go through and then they keep going and 18 years, I'm just, I'm in awe and congratulations on all, on everything and everything you're doing for well, your community. I appreciate it's you amazing. too. I wish you all the best. And I, I love this connection. And to everybody out there who's 
you know, putting good into the world and working hard and gets those moments where you're just not sure, you know, just feel my love and appreciation and support as well. And, you know, we have to just do what we think is the best thing that we can do these days and bring as much kindness to the world as we can. Yeah, we need it. We need it. <laughs> Christine from Liberation Yoga, thank you so much. We'll save this on our page oh, and we'll, uh, upload cool. it to our website as well. Thank you for having me. Have a beautiful thank day. You. Me too. Have a bye bye.